a few days ago i gave you guys a tour of my notion workspace showing how i organize and manage a major portion of my life using my favorite productivity app notion this video is the part 1 of my notion workspace setup series where i'll be taking you through my complete notion workspace setup process today we'll recreate my main dashboard from scratch i'll also be sharing it as a template so stick around till the end of the video and without any further ado let's get started before you begin you will need a notion account if you don't have one just go to the notion website enter your email and follow the on screen instructions i'm just going to create a new workspace here choose the personal plan which is free for one person and it's going to take some time to get the workspace ready so now the workspace has been loaded and as you can see i have some default pages here on the sidebar and also the theme is dark but if you're using it for the first time then the theme might be light for you so all you need to do is just go to settings and in the appearance just select the dark theme okay now we don't really need any of these pages on the sidebar so let's just uh, delete them all just put each one of them into the trash okay so now our new workspace is completely empty let's add a page here and name it as dashboard and add an icon here uh, let's look for something like home this one looks good and we can even add a cover image now we can change the cover image from here we can upload our own images if we want from here or we can just select it from the gallery or we can even put a link or my favorite is just to go to unsplash and search for something uh, let's say this looks good i'm just going to select this one for now and that's it so as you can see the cover image has been added now i will just try and replicate my exact dashboard that i had made in my workspace now notion has block based content management and what is meant by that is if i just click here i can start typing anything over here okay so uh, let's say i'll type a, a heading first so this is a heading and then i have some text this is a, okay now if i click on these six dot icon here you can see it's a block similarly the second line is also a block and uh, if i want i can change the type of this block to something for example i can click here and i can do turn into let's say a heading 1 similarly there is even a heading 2 and i can do the same thing turn into heading 2 similarly there is a uh, heading 3 also turn into heading 3 there are other block types as well so for example if i want to create a page here i can just create a sample page and select it and turn into a page and now if i click on this you can see this is a page inside the dashboard page and here i can again add an emoji if i want an icon and a cover image and now here also i can type some text if i want now i'll show you a faster way to select the type of block so here let's say if i want to create a page i can just do a forward slash and then type page and notion will automatically give me the suggestion so here you can see i have page if i click it automatically makes a new page i can do sample page and then type something here and if i go back you can see this is a page i haven't added any emoji so that's why nothing is uh, being shown up here now there are other block types as well for example if i want the if i want bullet lists i can just do dash and then space and it makes the list and i can just you know keep on typing and as i hit enter new list will come up and if i want to nest a list i can just do tab and similarly inside this also i can nest another list so that's how this works similarly there is uh, another type of a block element which uh, which is numbered list so i can do one dot and it creates a numbered list and as i press enter the numbers keep on incrementing there's even a quote which you know you can just type some quote and it comes properly this is a sample quote 
and there's even a call out. Now call outs are used to bring the attention of the reader towards a certain information. For example, if there's a warning or uh, about a, a, some, some common mistake that people encounter. So you can just write, this is a sample. You can even change the color of this if you want from let's say yellow to orange or to green and even you can even change the emoji from let's say warning to this emoji or anything it's it's extremely customizable whatever you want you can change it here and um, now so uh, i think that's it about uh, the pages the basics of the pages and um, now before we move ahead there are certain important properties of the pages that you must understand so for example if i go to these three dots here if i click here you can see we have different font styles i can change the font from here these are the three options we have similarly there is an option of full width if i click on this now uh, these blocks will occupy a much larger width in the original in the page now this is usually helpful in displaying calendars and tables you know the different forms of databases because having that additional width really helps in such scenarios similarly there's uh, an option to make the text smaller and even to lock the page once the page has been logged you can't really edit it this is now just a read only page you can select but you can't edit now once you click on this it will unlock and now again you can make the change and once you're happy you can again lock it now this is really helpful in preventing you from accidentally modifying something in a page or in a database now if you want to share this page with anybody you can come to share and you can either share it to web by selecting this button you have certain more options here you can allow people to edit this page comment on this page allow people to duplicate this page as a template and even a search engine indexing option which is actually reserved for the personal pro version which uh, we don't really have right now now uh, you can uh, copy this link and share it with people and they can easily come and visit this page the other option you have is to not share it on the web and invite people through emails so you can click here enter the email um, of anybody you want to add and you can select the type of access you want to give like edit comment view and you can click on invite so these are the two options for sharing this page now you can even go to updates and you can see the different updates that we made here similarly if you want you can favorite this page and it will be added in the in a in the favorite section here you can unfavorite it if you want. That's it about the basics of Notion pages. Now let's move on and create a full-fledged dashboard just like the one I have. So now uh, let's get rid of all of these headings here. And uh, now if I go to my dashboard, you can see I have four sections here. Today's task, scratch pad, calendar, and task list. Let's first create these sections and then we'll populate them. Now I'll go back to the dashboard here. And now uh, I'm just going to I use Control Shift 1, which turns the current block into heading 1, and I'm going to type today's tasks. Okay. Similarly, I'm going to uh, create another heading called Scratch Pad. Similarly, another one called Calendar and Tasks List. Okay. Now let's add a background color to each one of these. So for today's task, I'm just going to um, color it as let's say purple this one I'm just going to color it as yellow um, um, red and blue okay now if we want we can even add emojis in these headings in Windows the shortcut for that is Windows dot let's say this emoji and for this this then for calendar let's see this is the one and similarly for task list here also I can have list or something let's say this one looks good right now that we have added the emojis we can even change the color of these texts I'm just going to select this text go to text color and uh, let's select purple here okay similarly here I'll select yellow 
here it will be pink and here it will be blue so now it looks good right now in my original dashboard you can see that today's task and scratch pad are organized side by side and then we have the calendar and task list below them right let's do the same thing here i'm just going to take the scratch pad and i'm going to move it until i see this line here okay and if i release now you can see it's arranged the way we want it the layout of our dashboard is now created now we need to create the database i'm just going to come come down here to task list and i'm going to do slash table and select the table inline option okay first option table inline now here a new table has been created let's let's call it as tasks okay and if needed we can even add an emoji here if you if you want you can even add an emoji here our glass yeah this one this looks good so now that we have the table let's add some properties to it so here we have the task name now there is this tags uh, property we don't really want tags instead we'll call it as uh, let's say category okay and the property type change it from multi select to single select the select which is single select and he, and we want another property called due date which is basically the date by which we want to complete the task we wish to complete the task and uh, change the property type from text to date okay and then we'll create another property called done it will basically be a checkbox okay uh, property type from text to um there is the checkbox yeah so these are the four options we have and um, you can change the width of each of these sections the way you want we don't need much space for done but i'll keep more space for the name of the uh, of the task now what we can do here is we can uh create any new task here by just clicking here we can create a new task let's say task 1 similarly we can have task 2 and we can have task 3 we can even select the category right now there's nothing in this uh, property because we haven't really uh, created anything so let's create uh, some categories here let's say we have test as a category then we can create more categories like event or we can have early we can even have meeting okay so now we have four different categories test is for uh, any academic class test that we have then we can have an event uh, we can have an early category which is nothing but that which basically indicates that that task is supposed to be done as early as possible and then we can have a meeting template okay so now let's uh, choose different categories for each one of them and um, for now i'm just going to add another task called task 4 and i'm going to select the category as event right now for due date uh, we can select some due date let's say this one is supposed to be done on 29th the other one is supposed to be done on 30th one is supposed to be done on 27th and and then we can click on this checkbox so if we click on this checkbox it basically means that if we have completed this task okay now each one of these tasks here in this table is nothing but a page if i click on this open it's going to open it as a page here and if i want to maximize it maximize the view i can just click on open as page and it's going to give it's going to be displayed as a complete page if i want i can even add icons to this and um, a cover image also which is not really necessary at this point Over here on the top we have this breadcrumb which we can use to navigate inside the dashboard. So if I go back to the dashboard and come down here you can see the emoji has been added here on task 1. Similarly if I want I can even add an emoji here. Another emoji over here and yep okay. So it randomly assigns the emoji by the way. Now that we have added tasks to our task list let's go ahead and copy the link to this database. and come to this today's task section and paste this link here and click on create link database now what this does it basically creates a reference to this original task list table here so as you can see we have gotten the same table here and it has been populated with the same exact content and if i edit anything in the today's task section it will take effect over here as well
So now what I'm going to do is click. Now, now right now, right now it doesn't look very. Um, so right now it's very difficult to navigate in this today's task, task section because of this horizontal scroll bar. So we'll get rid of the scroll bar by converting this table into a list. And the way we do that is let's add a view and call it as list view. Okay. And we're going to select the type as list and click create. So now the same table has now been rendered as a list where it, it's much more minimalistic and we don't really need a lot of information here. Okay. So now we can click here and go to properties and we can select what properties we want to be displayed. So first is the category and then we have the done and then the due date is available. We don't want due date here, I guess. So now we have the tasks, the category of each task and the done checkbox displayed in a much more concise and minimalistic manner and not like a table. So this is the list view. So and uh, here we don't really need the table view. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. Okay. So now this list view has become the default for today's task section and it's referencing the task list. Now let's create a calendar view for the calendar in this very similar way. So I'm just going to copy the link here and come down into the calendar section, paste it and then create link database. Now by default, it's going to create the uh, a replica of this task table, but we want this to be a calendar. So what I'm going to do here is add a view, call it as calendar view, let's say, and select calendar and click create. Okay. So now the table has instead become a calendar and it's referencing the original task list. Now, if, if you come here, you can see this is the actual database and over here we have the arrow. This arrow indicates that this is basically a linked database. This is not the original database. This is the original database. There is no arrow here, but this and this are both linked databases. If I click here, it's going to take me to the original database, which if you see uh, in the breadcrumb, it is dashboard slash tasks, which is nothing but this database. Now here again, I can select the properties that I want to be shown. I can click here and go to properties and turn on the properties that I want to be shown like the done and the category. Okay. We don't really want due date because it's already shown here in the calendar. It's very obvious. What is the due date of each of these tasks? So here now we have only the default view as the calendar view, but in my original database, I had two different views. One was pending and the other was all. So in the all, view it shows all of the tasks across the calendar and in the pending view it shows only those tasks that were pending so let's go ahead and create that now so for that click on add a view and uh, let's call it as pending and select the type as calendar click create okay so now we have got two different views one is named as pending and the other is called as calendar view let's change this calendar view to all so we can click here and rename it as all. Okay. So now we have all and pending. So in the all section, anyways, it's displaying all of the tasks on the calendar. In the pending section, we need to add a filter to filter out. And again, here in the pending section, you can see it's uh, not displaying the required properties. So let's go ahead and do that here again. So you actually need to turn the properties on or off for each of the views that you create. So here again, I'm going to uh, click on, I'm going to activate done and category. So now it's displaying the way we want. And here let's add a filter. So click here and go to filter. So I'm just going to add a filter and where the done property is not ticked. Okay. Where the done property is not checked. Now here, if I click on this checkbox, you can see that the task disappears. This is because it's only showing the filter is only displaying those tasks where the done property is set to false, where the done property is not checked. So here, uh, uh, if I go to all, you can see all the tasks are displayed. But if I go to pending, only the pending tasks are displayed. And if I want to reset this, I can, since these uh, databases are linked, if I want to reset this, I can just come here and uncheck this and it again appears here. So our calendar section is completely ready. Now we'll do the same thing for the task list as well. So here also we'll create an all view and a pending view. Let's do that now. Click on add and call it as pending. 
type as table create it's the same thing here right now so and let's rename the default view to all so we have all and we have pending in the pending section what we need is a filter okay so let's add a filter here and where the done property is basically false right another thing we want is to display the latest tasks on the top of the list which is certainly not the case right now so for that we need to add a sort so i'm just going to add a sort here add a sort and where the due date is descending and now if you see the tasks have been arranged okay in the pending section we'll go ahead and do the same for the all section as well so here also i'm just going to add a sort we don't need a filter for all section we just need a sort where the due date is descending okay so now our tasks list and calendar section are completed and we just need to add filters to the today's task so the today's task is supposed to display those tasks which are not completed and have the due date as today so let's add a filter for that so here i'm just going to add a filter add a filter here where done is false add another filter and due date is today okay so now it's only going to display those tasks that have the due date as today which if you see is task 1 here we can see task 1 has the due date as today and it's not done and if i click the checkbox it's going to disappear from the today's task list and same from the pending section of the calendar as well so here if i uncheck it reappears in both of those places now our today's task section is almost complete there's just one more functionality that we want to add and for that uh, let's go ahead and drag this task 3 which has the category as early to some day in the future let's say june 1st okay this means task 3 has a deadline of june 1 but it's better to complete it off at the earliest so such tasks are supposed to be displayed in the today's task section even if they are far ahead in future so for that let's modify our filter let's delete these first because we'll be adding filter groups i'm just going to remove this here and now let's add a filter group the first group is done is unchecked and the due date is is today now add a second filter group change it to or and here will have where done is unchecked and the category and the category is early now this filter group basically means that this section is going to display those tasks that are pending and have the due date as today and at the same time it's also going to display all those tasks which are not yet done which are still pending and they have the category as early so if the tasks are not completed and they have the category as early which means these tasks are supposed to be completed at the earliest they will still be shown in today's task so now if i go here you can see even this early task appears even though it's far ahead in uh, even though it's supposed to be completed on june 1 it still shows up here because we are supposed to complete it off at the earliest and if i click on this it disappears so now our today's task section calendar section and task list section are complete i usually use the scratch pad section as a to do list we can create to do lists here and let's call it as to do 1 2 2 2 with this our home dashboard is complete so here we implemented the task list as a database and then we create linked databases of this database as a calendar and also in today's task section and then we added the scratch pad we also added views for pending and all based on filters and uh, we also saw how we can use filter groups to create complex filters that's it for today If you found this video helpful please don't forget to share it with your friends and colleagues thank you very much for watching and i'll see you later